The Rock and Roll Coffee Show is brought to you by Writers and Rockers Coffee Company, keeping the music and memories alive with some damn good coffee. Be sure to pick up your Rock and Roll Coffee Show coffee only at writersandrockerscoffee.com. And also brought to you by Retroactive, located at Broadway at the Beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, keeping you retro with everything from 70s, 80s, and 90s. Shopretroactive.com. It's the Rock and Roll Coffee Show. Yeah, we go. So there's exciting things going on right now with you. You've got yeah. a new record coming out with your project. Your well, it's your band, Paul yeah. Adele's Screen Therapy. That's right. Coming out October twentieth. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Real soon. Okay, okay. How exciting is this for you? Uh, it's extremely exciting. I'm excited about the album. I'm really excited about the band. Uh, it's it's all brand brand new. Um, so. To this point, we've released two singles, one called Scream Therapy, which is already doing really well. Found out uh, yesterday that the song Scream Therapy was number seven on a, a major uh, Baltimore radio station called 97 Underground, which was uh, really wonderful news. That's great um, news. To, to know it's in heavy rotation. And uh, so and then we have a second single that's called Rabbit Hole, and that has now just come out on uh, streaming services on Spotify and uh, Apple Music and things like that. We'll do one more single and then, uh, and then release the album. And uh, after that single, sing that uh, third single, then we'll release the album on streaming services. So the mm -hmm. album on October 20th is going to be available on Paris Records. It's parisrecords.com. And uh, that will be on CD. CD only. Hmm. Okay. Is there plans to do any vinyl or anything like that? Uh, perhaps. Yeah. I've been thinking about that. And if it seems like, uh, if it seems like that makes sense, I think that would be awesome to do. Mm -hmm. I haven't had album on vinyl in a long time <laughs> what was your last uh vinyl that you had i think it was probably i mean uh yeah i'm sure it was probably turn of the screw although um there's some dangerous toys things uh does a uh, dirty looks turn of the screw which is um and cool from the wire also came out on vinyl mm -hmm. but then there's been uh a couple reissues of dangerous toys albums recently too uh that are also on vinyl so i guess that would be the most recent yeah 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 i picked up a uh, pissed on vinyl recently yeah 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 but um so screen therapy how long have you been working on this is it like fairly new or has it been in the can for a while no it's almost brand new it's uh yeah. and it's been um for i'd say about the last year it's uh it's been pretty um pretty focused on mm -hmm. though but uh and intensely so uh yeah this the songs all came together um pretty quickly and then uh and then the album was actually recorded pretty quickly too so um it's all it's all brand brand new we've played one show so far how'd that go uh, it was awesome yeah yeah, yeah. So is it is uh, is it um different for you being like the front man uh it's it's a, it's a different thing it's something i'm very used to um i've been fronting bands for um for decades mm -hmm. and uh just not probably the ones um like you know obviously not dangerous toys or or dirty looks but um other bands uh that i've been front man of you know that was uh, a while though right while something ago. i'm comfortable with yeah okay okay how many songs did you record for this record uh, 12, 12, 12 songs, songs 12 songs on the record is that all you did was 12 songs or did you record more uh, no, we recorded, um, I mean, in, in demo stages, there was, uh, several more, but, um, as far as, uh, recorded for the album, we recorded 12. Mm -hmm. And tell me about your band. Cause I don't know much about your band. Who's in your band. 
Uh, the drummer's name is Frank Creaky, and he and I have played together for uh, well over, yeah, he would be um, the tallest guy in, <laughs> in that picture. I don't know if you want to say second from the left. Or, second the guy standing left. next to me is Frank, yeah. Okay. And uh, so he and I um, have played together in bands and been really close friends for uh, at least 20 years, probably more than that. Okay. Um, so we have uh, sort of an intuition um, with things. So, so the songs came together uh, really fast with him and we actually put together the demos um, with just he and I, and then uh, brought in uh, Joe Dordino uh, to play the bass. And that's, that's the guy with the hat. hat on. And he's a fantastic bass player. Absolutely fantastic. So, um, and then Lee Young is standing next to Frank on the other end, on the opposite side of uh, Joe. And uh, he plays rhythm guitar and uh, also sings. Um, Joe also sings. So we have three strong vocals mm -hmm. in the band, which makes the, um, the live thing sound very much like the studio album. Now you chose to release it through Paris Records. How did that relationship come up? I know you've released stuff through them before with other bands prior to that, but when this Scream Therapy at record came up, why did you choose to go through a record company and not do it on your own like a lot of people do these days? Oh, I've been, uh, like you said, I've been working with Paris Records for um, probably a couple decades now. Um, you know, going back to broken teeth stuff and things like that. And uh, so it's, it's always been just a good working relationship and uh, a, a good way to, um, to get the word out. And uh, so it, it's always worked out well. So that's why. Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard the record. You sent me the record. And I got to say, it's a great record. Um, Thank you. I think some of my favorite songs are, well, I like Screen Therapy, the lead track. The first one you released, I liked uh, Stir Crazy. Ah. I like that. That one's a little bluesier, right? Yeah. A little bluesier vibe. That's definitely that's definitely a, a bluesier vibe. Um, that one was written pre-pandemic. Well, actually, it was written. It was written at the very beginning of the pandemic, obviously, um, because the subject matter is is the pandemic and stir crazy and how like uh and this was written probably two maybe three months into it you know mm -hmm. where where we weren't sure, quite sure you know is this going to be a couple weeks or is this going to be you know there, there's that period of time when you just really didn't know right i and other people really hadn't figured out you know how to spend their days when they couldn't spend it in a normal way mm. you know um so yeah so stir crazy uh, i think um a lot of people are going to be able to re relate to that um sure. you know yeah stay awake till the daybreak wake up at the crack of two binge <laughs> watching netflix can't find nothing better to do that kind of thing you know right. yeah that's a good one and i liked uh run as well oh good yeah so some good stuff on there well thank you um, now, you mentioned before you did play a live show already. Is there more plans for more shows? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're in the process of uh, booking shows right now um, uh, around, around Texas and things. Um, things will really get rolling uh, hard here um, in another month or two after the holidays. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's mm -hmm. the plan is to... Uh, to use that time to set those things up and, and get things rolling um, at that point. Okay. Has this, was this record always planned to be a full length record? Cause you know, a lot of people release singles and don't release a full length record. Has it always been going to be a record or? Oh know? yeah. 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 I mean, uh, like after the pandemic, um, I started just writing a whole bunch. And uh, so, you know, had more songs, um, more songs than uh, 
than needed. And they just all sort of wrote themselves. So, um, yeah, this is just, just like, okay, here's, you know, here's these songs that I basically felt like I was handed, uh, which actually followed a period, uh, a long period for me, a very long period of, um, of not writing. Mm. So, uh, so during the pandemic, um, whereas I listened to a lot of music, but I really wasn't doing very much writing for whatever reason. Um, and then after it, I found I was writing heavier music. After the, okay. <laughs> you can, I, you can kind of hear the songs, uh, you know, songs yeah. like, um, stir crazy are, are a little more bluesy uh and then some of the other songs get a little heavier after that yeah i think i think any fan of yours and dangerous toys and dirty lux are gonna like this record and i Good. think it's got a um it's got like an old school metal sound kind of with some sleaze in there and you know it's got a little dark side to it sometimes too yeah yeah there is there's there is a dark side and i think that um you know, <clears throat> that sort of shows itself sometimes, uh, both in the music and in the lyrics. So yeah, there's, there's I think you can probably tell, somebody said um, that it was telling a story uh, and that wasn't intentional, but when I listened to it, it's like, yeah, you can kind of hear that, I guess. And was there any songs that were some of your favorites to record? Uh, Wake Up Call was a favorite. Um, I thought uh, that song in particular, um, both uh, Frank and Joe, who are featured in those songs, uh, are, uh, are in that song, Wake Up Call, um, just totally knocked it out of the park. So when I wrote it, I, I made sections where it's like, okay, here's like a drum solo section and here's the bass solo section and, you know, mm -hmm. just go for it. And, uh, and they did, and they just totally killed it. So, um, yeah. that was, a that's, that's a highlight for me. Um, there's, there's lots of them. Uh, the songs yeah. were really fun to record. Yeah. Wake up call is another one on my list of my favorite ones. So that's the one that starts with like a, a robotic voice in the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, okay. it's, the song is about um, uh, robots creating other robots and uh, using AI. And, you know, when the, the robots they build are smarter and can learn, then eventually, um, you know, they'll just kind of take over. Yeah. Man, so that's a what that song is about. AI is getting a little crazy i think yeah. have you have you been keeping up with what ai is doing with music a little bit like freaky things like like you could i saw an app where you could tell it the um i think you tell it the lyrics and it makes up a melody and sings it yeah or, or something yes. where you know you hear in in the the computer sounded pretty good into where you were you would ask who is that singing and the answer would be it's nobody singing it's crazy I that saw, I that saw is that's a wake-up call yes all yeah. of it all of it is a wake-up call to like whoa that that's that that frightens me i saw a video i'll have to find it again and send it to you but it's this and everything is AI, the whole video, the music, the singing, everything in it. And it's heavy. It's really a, like a heavy song. Yeah. And it's just crazy. I'll find that link and send it to you and you'll be okay. <laughs> no way. This is a computer. It's just nuts. But yeah. You know. And it's, I mean, uh, the way I see it, you know, the music business is in jeopardy as it stands with just people creating music. Yes. Yeah. The last thing we knew, need to do is have machines creating music <laughs> and then, uh, you know, competing with machines with music, but as in the song Wake Up Call, 
we'll be competing with machines for everything. Yeah. So uh, that's that's that frightens me. And so I wrote about that. Talk about the writing a little bit for this record. What did you do all the writing or was this a collaboration with your bandmates or anybody else contribute? Uh, no, no, I, I did all the writing after um, the songs were written. Um, Frank and I, uh, like I said, demoed out the whole record. Mm -hmm. So so the recording of the album was sort of the third time through. OK. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just uh, would would come up with riffs and things. Then usually melodies and lyrics would come uh, after them, inspired by by the music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your logo, you got you in your flying V on a lot of these uh, a lot of these logos that I keep seeing around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love that shot yeah that's that's that guy that's this one that um this was i've had this guitar forever uh i played this guitar on the first dirty looks record cool from wire uh, the first one that i played on nice. um so my first major label album was this guitar and uh it's uh i think in 82 i'm guessing Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been through quite a bit. Is that your go-to guitar? Is that your main guy? Uh, I have three main guitars that I go to. Um, the other ones were uh, our Ghost Machine guitars. And Ghost Machine guitars are made um, by Scott Dalhoover, uh, who also plays guitar in Dangerous Toys. Okay. Who makes fantastic guitars really i didn't yeah. i wasn't aware of that so when you see dangerous toys playing we're all playing uh scott's guitars made by scott basses too or no bass too yeah really mm -hmm. i did not know that does he have a website mm -hmm. i'd like to check him out yeah i guess i guess i have to show off so Obviously, this one, um, this was a, this is a workhorse. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, that's Ghost Machine. Okay. <clears throat> and this one gets played a bunch. And um, this one is also Ghost Machine. Nice. And it gets played a bunch. So. Those are the main three guitars. Uh, those are the only three guitars I used on them. Okay. Okay. I'll have to check those out. Yeah. So speaking of Dangerous Toys, you guys have been a little bit busy, right? You've been doing some shows. Yeah, we've been um, playing several shows. We played Austin. We went and played in Hollywood at a, um, in my old stomping grounds at the Whiskey. Yeah. Um, which uh <clears throat> i haven't played there since 1989 although when oh, i lived i used to go there all the time i just didn't play um and uh so that was cool that brought it back a whole bunch of memories sure sure How and uh that? gosh that place is just so historic you know yeah knowing that you know all these different bands i was thinking about standing on the stage there and i'm thinking just about all of my heroes have stood right here. You can't help but think that, right? Oh yeah, I took a picture of it. I took a little <laughs> video. I'm like, wow, that little that little space right there, like you name it, all of the people that are my heroes, almost all, have stood right there. Yeah, that's a and feeling. Not only that, but uh, a lot of my heroes when they were standing right there, I didn't know their names yet. Yeah. You know, Eddie Van Halen was standing there when I didn't know his name yet. Randy Rhodes was standing there when I didn't know his name yet. 
And let's see, we also played in, uh, <clears throat> we also played in Denver. Um, and that was, that was awesome. Uh, we loved playing in Denver, by the way. Um, are you guys and, uh, doing we got this? Boston coming up next weekend? The 21st, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it seems like you guys are picking up a little bit with the shows. Are you, are you looking to do more shows with them or, you, or is this just, just, oh, we've, been, we've been playing, um, fairly steadily for, um, for quite a bit. Like, uh, after the pandemic, <clears throat> pardon me, we, uh, we had a lot of shows, a lot of festivals and things that were all, mm-hmm. all set up that were, that got taken out by the pandemic. So after the, after the pandemic, all that stuff, all got, uh, all got just rescheduled to afterwards. So like in 2021 and 2022, uh, we did a lot of flying around and Mm -hmm. playing a bunch of festivals and things. Um, then you're out on the monsters of rock cruise again next year, right? Next year, the Monsters Rock Cruise, yeah. Yeah, out with, uh, there we go, Ace Freely, Accept, Queensryche. Yeah. Tons of bands, Winger, Extreme, all kinds of bands. That's going to be a fun trip. Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. Hopefully you won't get into a hurricane this time, right? Last time, didn't you get in, there was like a, (laughs) there was was like a storm when you were playing, right? (laughs) It was more than that. (laughs) I heard somebody introduce a band and they said, well, there may be a tornado right outside the boat, but we got great rock and roll in here. Oh, that boat <laughs> like, was, I didn't that, know about the tornado. That boat but, was really rocking, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was rocking. Yeah, they, uh, like for the first day or two, um, they had the, the the top deck just all closed down, but yeah. that was I've been on like seven or eight, I think Monsters of Rock cruises, and uh, that was the first one that um, was ever like that. Uh-huh. So I think I think odds are pretty good with Monsters of Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One one year I'm gonna make that trip. One year. Oh, you have to. It's yeah. it's. Yeah, you should go this year if you can. Yeah, I don't think I can make that. Uh, great lineup, but um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. So I wanted to ask you too about any new Dangerous Toys music as well, because I know there's songs out there, but have we recorded any? Um, there are songs that have um, are in various stages of, of completion, and uh, more recording is uh, is planned and should happen and we should be have something to release um fairly early i would think in 2024 nice okay uh if not a complete album then you know songs um singles or an ep something. or something yeah well i know but the, the new songs are great waiting. yeah there's people waiting for them mm. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard any of the newer stuff, but um, it's really cool. I've heard just what I've seen on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we've, been playing, uh, we've been playing some of the new songs live. Yeah. Like uh, Hangman Boogie. We've been playing that live. And uh, gosh, I love that song. Yeah, and that sounded great. I saw horses. that one. Mm-hmm. Um, just those two, though. That's all I've seen. Live show, huh? I've only seen those two. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be adding some more too. Awesome. So, uh, awesome. yeah, some, some great stuff. Are you, is uh scream therapy, are you planning on trying to get on any of these festivals or like really do a run with this band? Um, or are you going to do like one-off shows here and there touring? Oh yeah. Um, we would like to do, you know, um, whatever whatever we can so we'll see Mm -hmm. everybody's uh everybody's all gung-ho so okay good we'll see where that takes it 
yeah, yeah. Because you guys and, did a video uh, already for Scream Therapy, the song. We plan on uh, probably starting a new record um, in not very long. So, mm -hmm. a new record? Yeah. Oh, just pumping them out. Yeah. Well, all these things. <laughs> Gosh, they take forever, right? Um, like, this one was done and in the can for for quite a while um, before you know anybody started to hear about it. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, uh, we're always we're always six months at least yeah. ahead of plan. You know, I'm planning six months from now, always. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're busy. You keep yourself busy. I know that with all different projects. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy it. That's good. Good, man. So people can pre-order Scream Therapy now from parisrecords.com and Paris Amazon, correct? Uh, they can also find it on amazon.com. If uh, All they have to do is either search my name, Paul Liddell, uh, or Paul Liddell's Scream Therapy, and it'll come right up. Yeah. How come you put your name in front of the screen therapy? Because uh, the songs are my screen therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what uh, that's kind of what it is. So that made an, an, an apt title, uh, an apt name for the band. OK, so cool. and. Um, <clears throat> and that and uh i feel very strongly um about it and uh strong enough to you know put my name on it mm -hmm. um so uh awesome. so that's why okay okay you feel this is one of your best records i do do you okay you put I out do. some good records so that's talking pretty highly yeah, yeah, I, I uh, am extremely pleased with the way it turned out and uh, uh, really, really like the songs. Um, and they're really fun to play live and the band is uh, band is great. And uh, so um, 2024 will be a good, good year for this band. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I know the fans are going to like it and, you know, congratulations on it. Oh, thank awesome. you very much. Yeah, man. All right, Paul. Well, I appreciate you joining me. Thanks for your time. Yeah, it was appreciate good catching up. Good to see you again. Yeah, man. All right, bud.